Hello, everyone, and welcome to an ep another episode of Fantasy for the Ages, the show where father and son sit down and talk about fantasy, sci-fi, and all other sorts of nerdiness that we feel like talking about. Today, I've got a Just Jim episode for you, just me coming at you, and I'm looking at my picture and watching the flash go brighter and darker, and boy, that's distracting. Um, feeling out some technology tonight, because... You might notice, if you look in the background, there's no nothing on the sides. My new green screen showed up. Unfortunately, this thing is so freaking huge that it's actually hard to light it well. You can see every now and then, my body starts to disappear. Oh, look at that, the arm. <laughs> I have to figure out, I think, how to better light this monstrosity that just took up my room. Still... I don't mind that everything behind me is gone now. And you see nothing but books. Why would you see nothing but books today? Well, that's what we're talking about. But before I jump into the content here, let me just remind you that if you enjoy what you hear today, be sure to like this video down below. Uh, subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of the content we have coming out. Uh, certainly take a look at all the different kinds of things here on our channel and tell other people about it. We'd love to talk more with you as well. So down in the show notes, you can find out how to connect with us on our Discord server. There's an invite link there, as well as the places we hang out on social media, especially Twitter and Mastodon. All right, that's what I have for notes. Let me move into what I'm here to talk to you about today. I did something interesting today. I went through my physical library. See, I've got a lot of books in this house, bookshelves and bookshelves full of books, things I've collected through well over 30 years of just adulting and buying books. And really, it's almost 40 years worth going back to my early teens. And um, I don't have all the books I bought. I've certainly sold some at used bookstores, sold others on garage sales, but there's a few key ones I've kept, things I treasure, and then there's other just odds and ends that somehow are still on my bookshelves, but I haven't read. And in some cases, they've been there for years, and I haven't read, so I went and I explored that today. I looked at what gems are hiding in physical copy on my bookshelves, and what should I do about it? Should these be read? Do I add them to my TBR? Interesting. I will tell you, my TBR is a little longer now. And I want to share just some of these gems, some of these goodies that I found today. And uh, I'll be interested in hearing what you think of what I found. And Oh my goodness, the light going back and forth on me is crazy. <laughs> Definitely going to have to figure out how to work with the lighting better. I look a little red now. It's not just my shirt. Oh, see, now it's better. Maybe I need to keep my hands up. I think so. I don't know. All right. So what did I find when I was searching today? Really some amazing sorts of books. Okay, first off, one of the books we did on our uh, Try Reader Tournament recently when we talked about some of the best sci-fi that's out there. Um, I heard from... Gentle Giant Jason on our server uh, about John Scalzi's science fiction. Now, it was partly that tournament and partly just I've been enjoying some John Scalzi stuff. And he pointed me to the Old Man's War series, a six book series. So I added that to my TBR. Well, humorously, I found I should do that the right way. I found that book, Old Man's War in my library. And then I held up this one too. Okay, this is book six. And I do happen to have all of them in between too. So I already have this whole war, this whole uh, Old Man's War series, and I have never read them. I didn't buy these new. I think I got these from someone else who was giving me books that they had enjoyed and clearing out space in their house. So I'm pretty sure I know where I got them, but I've never touched them. But these were ones that looked good enough. I kept them. So, all right. I moved them up my TBR because I actually...
actually own the books. I should read them. Another one I found. This is pretty cool. A hardcover edition of Dragons of the Dwarven Depths. Book one of The Lost Chronicles. This is a trilogy of books that's set in the same basic timeline of Dragonlance Chronicles, you know, uh, the, the original series. So we've got some of these original characters there on the cover. Fans of Dragonlance, you recognize who you're looking at, okay? So there's three of these. I only own this one. Never read it, but I bought it in hardcover. I'm, I'm, I'm a Dragonlance fan. So I've added this to my TBR as well as the second Dragons of the High Lord Skies and the third Dragons of the Hourglass Mage. I'll have to buy those two after I get through this one. I wasn't done with Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Well, at least not Margaret Weiss because I found this book on my shelves. Another hardcover. Margaret Weiss's Amber and Iron, another Dragonlance book. This is part of the Dark Disciple trilogy, but this is book two. I don't have book one. Now, I looked it up on Goodreads, and I recognized that cover. I think I had book one and somehow lost it or sold it or one of my kids took it. I don't know, but I can't find book one. Hopefully I will, because I think I had it in hardcover too. But I definitely don't have book three. So book one, uh, Amber and Ashes, I'll have to get again. So then I can read Amber and Iron. And if they're both good enough, I'll go on to book three. Uh, Amber and Blood. I had to think. It wasn't in my notes. But pull it out of my memory. So these are some pretty good finds so far. Now here's another one that I came across. Sabriel, Garth Nix. In fact, all three books of the Abhorson trilogy. These are actually Zachary's books, but he left them here. So they're already on my TBR. I don't have to buy them. I've got them just waiting for me. So again, I moved them up on the TBR a bit. Of course, there are three more books that have come out after the Abhorson trilogy that basically are now Abhorson 4, 5, and 6. I had them, added them all to the TBR quite a while ago, so it's just kind of nice to know they're here already, and I don't have to buy them. But whenever I found I already have these books, they rise on the list. Uh, one that I talked about in a recent series, here's the proof. Wow, <laughs> green screen, not working as much as it should. Doom a Key, it's covered by a label because I got this at a used bookstore. The funny thing is it's brand new. It wasn't used. This used bookstore in Anchorage, Alaska, called Tidal Wave. If you're a listener in Anchorage, you know what Tidal Wave is. Uh, that bookstore sells both new and used books. Mostly used, but a few new ones. And I picked this one up new. But for only $3.99. So it had been out a little while already. Originally sold for $28. So I got a good steal, but I've never read it. It is on my TBR because I added all the Stephen King books that I haven't read yet recently. Okay, that TBR is getting scary. More about that in just a little bit. Ah, uh, then I found some books of a series that some of our Discord people have enjoyed. You know, the from Forgotten Realms, The Legends of Drizzt. Okay, look at that. Book one. Homeland. So I've got it already. Never read it. I also have book two, Exile, waiting to be read. I also have book six. <laughs> Three, four, and five do not exist anywhere here in my house. So I will have to buy them as well. If you know this series, though, you can maybe predict what just happened to my TBR because there's 39 books in The Legends of Drizzt. So these three and 36 more were added to the list. <laughs> All right, then we've got another series that I own the first two books of. This is Simon R. Green, his Nightside series. Now, 
I picked these up. I thought they looked interesting. Uh, bought them brand new. They're urban fantasy and kind of very much along the same lines and style as what Jim Butcher leans into with the Dresden Files. Now, I don't think they're Dresden Files quite quality, but the cover of the first one says... A fast, fun little roller coaster of a story, macabre and thoroughly entertaining. Jim Butcher, author of the Dresden Files. Okay, so clearly they're leaning into that they're, they're like the Dresden Files. John Taylor is the main character who's kind of the Harry Dresden type for this series. So I'm going to read these two. I don't know why I ever never got around to trying them in the first place, because they look cool. But now they're officially in the TBR and the 18 additional novels and short stories that come with that series. They're all in there. Okay, I'm, I'm almost done here. I, I found this one on my shelf. Now, this is something I think my daughter had picked up. I think my son was excited about it back in the day, too. So Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. This is actually a script, you know, from the, the play that they did. So it's special rehearsal edition script. And we were big Harry Potter fans. I read all of that to my kids when they were young. And, and I'm not adding this in. I don't need this. But it's a cool book. It really looks nice. It's a hardcover. I've got one last book, though. One last one to share. And this, I was like, are you kidding me? I own this. Never read it. How did I even forget I owned it? On Discord, we're doing our Dragon Riders of Pern read-through. I own the Dragon Lover's Guide to Pern. Second edition. This is from 1997. And it's just every geek lover of the Pern series. It's got all the goods. So now it's sitting here waiting until we finish all the books in the Pern series. And then I will read it. Because now I'd like ruin it for myself. Even though I bought it, I think, after I'd read the original 16 books. So I could have read this then. Now, nope. Keep the secrets out. Don't want to know. Gonna wait till later. So, quite the walk of discovery. Wandering through my bookshelves today. There's probably a few more, but I was like, these were the highlights. These were the gems that jumped up to the top. And I don't understand how I can have this problem that I buy so many books that I forget the books I bought and even move them around the country. Some of these have been with me for multiple relocations. <sighs> I should have had an official TBR earlier, apparently. Now they're on the list. They'll get read. Assuming I live long enough because there is now over 1,100 books on my TBR. 1,106 to be specific at this moment, but check tomorrow. It could be longer. It could be shorter if I finish a book tonight. We'll see. That's all I got for you. So it's a short little episode here today, just having a little fun. Um, the, we're going to drop this as one of our regular episodes. So you're going to be going, wow, Jim, you're skimping on us. I know, I know, but it's hard to keep up with our schedule sometimes. We also have the addition right now that uh, a little bit of a, a curveball perhaps being thrown into our recordings because this weekend, Zach and I have plans to record a couple more episodes. And well, this is when Austin, Texas, where he lives, has been hit with a pretty bad ice and winter storm. He has no power. He hasn't been to work in a few days because the city is shut down. 75% of Austin has no power at this moment. He's not sure when the lights are coming back on. It is hard to record when you have no power. Now, I know Spencer with the Fantasy Files did a recording with me, a collaboration one time when he had no power, and he just sat in the parking lot of a Walmart and used their Wi-Fi to talk with me. <sighs> That's commitment, Zach. <laughs> no, I don't put that on my son. I want him to stay home when the road is a sheet of ice. Stay home, stay safe, and uh, get that power back on soon. In the meantime, enjoy this short episode, and we'd love to hear what sort of gems you have hiding in your house. Take a look at your book collection. 
Do you have so many books that you have lost track of what's there? Do you have books that showed up and you don't know how they got in your house? Is there a book gnome who's just depositing things by secret? Do you have book two of a series and have no idea whatever happened to book one? Or is that just me? Share in the notes on this episode, or again, come find us in Discord, or hit us up on Twitter or Mastodon and let us know what your bookshelves are looking like and what beauties, discoveries, and treasures are waiting for you. Let me run my outro now to remind you visually of those ways that you can get in touch with us. All the stuff's here. Remember, like, subscribe, join us in Discord, all these other things you can do. And oh yes, as it shows now, we also have a Patreon. So we would invite you to support us on Patreon to help buy this freaking big green screen because it wasn't cheap and it's just free. So if you're willing to help us out with that, we are willing to take your money. And we'll throw a few other benefits your way. Thank you, all of you who are our favorite patrons. We appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next time.